Okay, right, so starting with carbapenems, a uh, kind of beta-lactam antibiotics. The main drug in this group is imipenem. When we tested imipenem in the laboratory, it was highly effective. It could kill most of the organisms including the gram-positive, gram-negative and even the pseudomonas. Okay, so these were effective against almost all the bacteria. Even they had the ability to kill the anaerobic bacteria. So in the laboratory, this imipenem it was killing almost all the organisms. So we were very much excited. So next, what we did is we tried imipenem in humans. So when we tried imipenems in human being, it did not kill even a single bacteria. We were surprised. Because in the laboratory, it was killing every bacteria. But in the human body, it was not killing even one. So when we thought of the reason, and it was found that our kidneys, they are producing an enzyme. The name of this enzyme is dihydropeptidase. So this dihydropeptidase enzyme, these are mainly breaking the imipenum. And when imipenum is broken, obviously it will not, break, uh, it will not work so then what we thought of a strategy is what if we inhibit this enzyme dihydropeptidase okay so what we thought is why not to inhibit this enzyme so when this enzyme is inhibited then imipenem will not be broken so when it is not broken it will become effective so therefore we developed a drug which will inhibit this enzyme and the name of that drug is celastatin so next when we gave imipenem with celastatin it was able to inhibit all the organisms okay gram positive gram negative as well as pseudomonas it was effective against all the other uh, bacteria so therefore now imipenem is always given in combination with celastatin next the main side effect of imipenem is it will produce seizure therefore these drugs are contraindicated in epileptic patient but imipenem is highly effective very broad spectrum antibiotics which are effective against even pseudomonas next after imipenem we developed still more carbapenems but we kept two things in mind first one is imipenems are broken down by dihydropeptidase therefore the newer drugs should not be broken by that next thing is imipenem is causing seizures so newer drug should have lesser risk of causing seizures so therefore in newer drugs we have taken care of these two problems and the drugs are meropenem eritapenem doripenem and ferropenem now like imipenem all these four drugs they are also broad spectrum that is they are effective against gram positive gram negative pseudomonas and even anaerobes but unlike imipenem these are not broken up by dihydropeptidase therefore they can be given without celastatin next thing is these four drugs they have got lesser risk of uh, causing seizures as compared to imipenem rest all the other properties are similar to that of imipenem now all these carbapenems all the carbapenems they are given by injectable route but except ferropenem because these can be given via oral route now next thing is if you remember regarding penicillin we knew that penicillin had a very narrow spectrum and what was the reason regarding the narrow spectrum yes because the bacteria they used to produce their security guard if you remember and what the security guard were doing they were breaking down the penicillin g right and now for protecting penicillin g what we did no penicillinase were the enzymes isn't it and penicillinase are also known as beta lactamase and for inhibiting these beta lactamase what we were doing we were giving beta lactamase inhibitors isn't it so these all are the beta lactamase inhibitors which are given in combination with the uh, normal penicillin right now what happens you know these bacteria they thought that again i should develop one more drug which can uh, inhibit more antibiotics so they developed an enzyme okay and the name of this enzyme is esbl that is the extended spectrum beta lactamase so before we had just beta lactamase now these 
bacteria have developed extended spectrum beta lactamase so if any bacteria have got this type of enzyme that is esbl extended spectrum beta lactamase it can break large number of antimicrobial so now not only beta lactams even non beta lactams are been broken down by this esbl enzyme esbl it become resistant to most of the antimicrobials and uh, and it will become very much powerful because no almost no antibiotics are able to inhibit these bacteria and you know which bacteria commonly harbor esbl yes that is klebsiella okay so that means any organism or klebsiella which has esbl it is resistant to most of the antibiotics but you know this esbl it has got two limitation first thing is it can be it cannot break carbapenem so whenever you give carbapenem it can inhibit the enzyme producing esbl or the klebsiella producing esbl next thing is if we give beta lactams or non beta lactams along with the beta lactamase inhibitors even they can inhibit this kind of bacteria okay so we have the advantage of these two properties so the bacteria which is producing esbl the drug of choice is carbapenem because esbl they cannot break carbapenem second thing is we can do is we can give beta lactams along with beta lactamase inhibitor okay so the common combination we are using is piperacillin and tazobactam okay so this was all about our topic regarding carbapenem next we shall start our discussion with monobactams in monobactams we have got only one example that is astunum and we have got two special points regarding astunum which is quite opposite to that of penicillin the first thing is it does not show cross tolerance okay now this thing is quite opposite to penicillin because penicillin they produces allergy isn't it and any person who is allergic to one type of penicillin he is allergic to any other type of penicillin also even not only penicillin that person if any person who is allergic to penicillin he is allergic to all other types of beta lactams antibiotics isn't it this we have discussed previously also but any person who is allergic to all type of beta lactams we to them we can give monobactams because monobactams like astunum they does not show any kind of cross tolerance now second important point regarding astunum is they are effective against gram negative bacteria or you can say they are effective against only and only gram negative bacteria including pseudomonas so this point is also quite opposite to that of beta lactam penicillin okay because penicillin they are effective against only gram positive bacteria whereas the astunum they are effective against only gram negative bacteria okay so this was all about astunum and this was all about our topic regarding beta lactam antibiotics i hope you people found this video helpful thank you for watching